So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Michan, and I am, I'd like to uh, thank you all for joining us for the Go Virtual Career Pathways Conference. I am Michan Hunter Thompson from SCCOE, and I will be your room host today. We ask that attendees keep themselves muted unless um, asked otherwise during the presentation, but feel free to use the Q&A to ask questions during the session. And now I'd like to introduce, uh, sorry, Caitlin Daniel Aragon, and she uh, will be presenting on the, sorry, on the, I just have to get my information together. I apologize. Grossmont College with the Forensics and forensics, our Education yes. and Justice Department. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Forensics and Justice. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So welcome, everyone, and take it away, Caitlin. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, as you heard, my name is Caitlin. I work at Grossmont College. Um, I am the Forensic Lab Technician here. We have an Administration of Justice Department which covers quite a few areas of law enforcement. Um, and for my personal background, I graduated at Gross, through Grossmont College, um, graduated with honors and then transferred to San Diego State to get my degree in criminal justice, graduated magna cum laude there. Um, and then I came back to Grossmont to work here uh, as a forensic lab tech. I've been here for nearly two years. Um, and I managed our lab here. So uh, our students work in the laboratory doing hands-on exercises um, and I'm in charge of the lab and managing the lab. Um, and I uh, also now with the new virtual learning um, have been moderating the uh, online lectures that we've been having because we are considered essential. Um, law enforcement education is essential. And so our students are learning on campus, social distancing, um, with reduced numbers, but our lectures um, have for the most part been online. And um, I will show up there with the professors. Um, I've also presented at the Southern California Association of Fingerprint Officers. We put on a Grossmont College um, workshop there to show off some new technology. I'll show you some pictures of that in a few moments. Um, but first I'd like to share a quick video with you about um, three of our graduates um, that now work with El Cajon Police Department. Um, this is a video that they put together. I'm Sarah. I'm Marcy. And I'm Tara. Welcome to the El Cajon PD Crime Lab. And we are, are your, your forensics, forensics team. team. In our accredited forensic laboratory, our certified crime scene investigators respond to major crime scenes, including homicides and other crimes of violence. We photograph the crime scene, search for evidence, collect and process all items. In the laboratory, we process evidence for latent prints using a variety of techniques, including chemical reagents and fingerprint powders. We can examine evidence and surfaces for blood and enhance any impressions using chemical reagents that we make in-house. We also collect DNA from these items. We can run DNA and latent fingerprints against various databases to search for possible suspects. That was a video um, put on by three of our graduates. Um, the one in the center, Tara, she, Tara, excuse me, she is one of our professors that works at Grossmont College, actually. Um, all of our professors currently work in the field or have previously worked in the field. Um, so you're getting hands-on immediate knowledge from people who are actually working in law enforcement. Um, it's not theory-based or anything like that. It's just, it's people that are in the field and they're sharing the knowledge with you. Um, let's go share with you a video we have. 
with our lab here on campus. We just had a new building built that now houses our fingerprint lab. Um, so previously we had a very old building or, and we now have a much more exciting one. So we have a fingerprint class, it's a basic fingerprint class and an advanced fingerprint class. And these are some of the labs that the students do through um, the advanced fingerprint course. So currently this is our super glue fuming chamber. So we're putting super glue in the chamber, which will then be heated and will react um, and will cause the fingerprints on items to be glued to the surface. And then we use a dye stain um, to dye the super glue itself and view it under forensic light source. And then you'll be able to see the fingerprints come up. So this is a lab um, that students do um, at the very beginning of our course. Um, this, these are some fluorescent powders that we use and it reacts with the fingerprint oils on whatever it is you're fingerprinting. And then you also view it under a forensic light source to see the fingerprints. Uh, we have lots of different colors of forensic light sources. Um, this is a lab for tape. So we have a material that you paint onto tape and then rinse it off. And then you'll be able to see the fingerprints here uh, that were left behind on things like duct tape, electrical tape, um, whatever you'll see in the crime scenes. This chemical here um, is silver nitrate and it's a process that it needs to be done in the dark but because of video I had to do it in the light so as you can see the rest of the page is turning really dark because this silver nitrate reacts with light and that's what this little light was was a UV light to bring out the fingerprints here so these are some chemicals that we use in the lab the students are using them to develop fingerprints on porous surfaces like paper um, this is an anhydrin lab. So an anhydrin is a chemical that also reacts with the components and fingerprints on porous surfaces. It needs heat in order to be react and it turns a purple color. This is another lab that we do with our students for greasy prints. So if you have a greasy surface and there's fingerprints left behind but you can't see them, you can use this Sudan black material um, and it will develop the prints. Indane dion is another chemical we use for porous surfaces, porous meaning um, things can soak into it. So things like paper or rocks, that sort of thing. It's also another chemical that needs to be heated and you can't really see the development until you put it under a forensic light source. So once you do that, wow, you can see those fingerprints pretty amazing. So this is a, all these are labs that the students actually physically do in our lab. This is another chemical we did on a non-porous surface. This was a tile. And these processes are blood. So we're processing bloody prints. Um, I don't know if you saw before the processes were very, very light. So we started here with a full bloody print and then continued depositing prints on the tile until there was nothing left. Um, but because of these different reagents that we're using, it's still bringing out the ridge details so you can see the fingerprints. So these were not seen before. And once we use the chemicals, you can see them. So that's just a sneak peek of what we have with the forensics lab. Um, I will now start our PowerPoint, go through the rest of our programs. Okay. All right, so our department here at Grossmont College is the Administration of Justice Department. We're under the Career Technical Education Division. Um, we have several different degrees and certificates. We've got a degree in law enforcement, 
in corrections, corrections meaning the jail system um, and the prisons, forensic technology, which is what I was just showing you about. That's where I work in, it's the most exciting one. Um, and security management. And we also have transfer degrees. So you can transfer to um, San Diego State and get your uh, bachelor's degree there. Uh, we do host academies. Currently due to the pandemic, we're not hosting any academies because there are very close quarters with um, physical education and um, working with unruly inmates in different scenarios with the police and the corrections. So we're not having any of those at the moment. Uh, we also have a dispatch and a security academy um, for anybody that's not looking to get a full degree, but they wanna get something that's gonna get them into a career pretty quickly. Uh, we also have POST, which is Peace Officer Standards and Training. It's the um, California requirements for training. Uh, we offer some of those courses here. So our professors that normally do our semester long classes, um, they will put on a shorter class that is specific to their field. So we have a blood spatter analysis course, latent print analysis course, a field evidence technician course. Um, and those are generally 40 hours. So either four 10 hour days or they break it up in, um, across five days with shorter hours. And then we also have a firearms course, which we do in January, and that's um, put on here in El Cajon over at the firing range. Um, you learn um, basically everything you know about handling firearms. And then we can put on other trainings as there's a need in the field. Um, we just, because our professors work in the field, we kind of ask them and say, hey, is there any need for such and such a, a training program? And because we are a college, we can offer the courses much less expensive than they do in the private sector. Um, so our, our courses are pretty popular for the area because of the cost. Um, and we're pretty great at what we do. And we actually started doing administration of justice courses here right when the college started. So we've been doing classes here since 1964. Um, our law enforcement degree is pretty great for the pandemic because it can completely be completed online. And this has happened before the pandemic started. Um, and it will transfer to SDSU or other universities. Um, and you can continue on to get your criminal justice degree. Um, as I said, all of our instructors have are currently working in the field, which is pretty amazing because um, if you're a really great student and you make a good impression on them, they are they want you in the field, they want you working in law enforcement, and they're going to help you as much as they can with um, internship opportunities, giving you letters of recommendation. We are um, very career focused, so we want our students to get jobs, we want to help our students get jobs, and we want to make sure this, they're good students and that they are um, good ethical students that are going to contribute to the law enforcement field. Um, pretty good salaries here in San Diego. Um, just starting out, like just a basic salary, about $60,000 a year, and that's not including overtime. So a lot of people in law enforcement work a lot of overtime. It's a very, very time consuming job. Um, so 60,000 is about the, the beginning and then you get incentive pay for education or bilingual and um, other things as well as um, for overtime. And we do have a police academy, which is separate from the degree. But like I said, it's currently not offered um, at the moment. I do believe that if you email us, we can give you locations to other police academies that other colleges are putting on. Our corrections degree is also available completely online. Um, we have both the law enforcement and the corrections degree on campus as well, generally speaking. At the moment, everything is only online, um, but in the future, we will have it back on campus as well. And the same thing, it can transfer to San Diego State um, and the graduates here. You can work um, at the private correction facilities, local jails or county agencies. Um, and they start around $50,000 a year, same thing. And we do have a corrections academy. As I said, it's currently not happening because of the pandemic, um, but it prepares you for a career 
um, and things like if you wanted to be a sheriff, if you wanted to be a corrections officer, police officer, detentions officer, it's a pretty good academy to go through um, from a school aspect instead of um, at an agency. It also shows whichever agency you're applying for that you're serious. So if, if you've already gone through an academy and they're gonna want you to go through their academy as well, perhaps, but it shows that you're a cut above the rest of the applicants because you've already gone through this. You've put yourself through it, your own time and money showing that you wanted to do this. And they look at that pretty seriously. Uh, we have a security management degree at Grossmont. So security management would be um, like uh, loss prevention for say working at Target, something like that. Um, all the retail major major corporations, they need security. So security is pretty, pretty high demand, um, pretty high demand job started here in San Diego and nationwide. Um, you can also do this degree online um, and it prepares you to work mostly in private security. There's other security that can happen, sworn security, but this is just going to be the entry level stuff. Um, we have a security academy also, which is the same thing I was mentioning previously, um, where you go through academy um, and that shows whoever you're applying for that you're serious about this, that you want this to be a career. Um, so you do get certified in CPR and you receive a guard card. Um, $45,000 is about the average here in San Diego starting out. Uh, you can work your way up, um, make $100,000 a year as the director. Uh, and then it just depends on which private company that you're, that you're applying for. Um, we have a post, which is the Peace Officer Standards and Training Certified Public Safety Dispatch course. So that's going to be a 911 operator. Um, it's 120 hours over 16 weeks on two weeknights. Uh, we did not offer it this semester due to the pandemic, but we will be in the future. Uh, and this is a certification that does not expire. Um, something that you need to do well with for public safety dispatch is you need to be really good at multitasking um, and you should have a pretty good typing speed. Um, as you can see in the photo there, you're gonna be looking at multiple screens, answering telephones, typing on a keyboard, all at the same time. Um, you're need it's a, it's a very high demand job. It's demanding on you um, and there is burnout. So it is a high demand turnover job as well. Um, they start out $20 an hour plus incentive pays. So pretty good. All you need to do is just go through our public safety dispatch course. It's not a degree or anything. It's just one course on the night, on the nights. We understand that people have jobs. Um, so we do some two weeknight courses. Um, and once you get certified, you apply to an agency, um, you can get, you can be a fire dispatcher. So you're dispatching the fire engines um, or the medics. You can be a medic dispatcher for 911 calls for the health side. Uh, you can also be a police dispatcher. So you can either work behind the scenes, just telling the police officers where they need to go, or you can work as the person answering the phones um, as the 911 operator. Um, there's also private transportation dispatching jobs, uh, which is going to be more like the truckers and um, the buses that have dispatch that they need to call in for. Um, so that's a really, really good job for very little requirements to get into um, and can make pretty good money um, just starting out. Plus overtime as well. Now our forensics technology degree, um, it, we meet the accreditation requirements here at Grossmont College. So to be an accredited lab in the um, government agency side, it's an international standards that they need to meet um, in order in and to pass in order to be accredited. Um, so here at Grossmont College, because we have state-of-the-art technologies, um, equipment, and instructors, we meet the same accreditation requirements that the crime labs do here in San Diego. Um, so this is gonna be a, a degree that you would take if you wanna be a career um, latent fingerprint examiner. So that's gonna be the person that sits at the lab and looks at the latent print cards. Latent is a word that means invisible. So when we say latent fingerprint examiner, it means you're looking at prints that were left that were invisible, but a forensic evidence technician has gone to the scene 
and developed that print to make it visible. So now you're looking at a visible print and you're comparing it to no, um, 10 print cards that have been taken from suspects or from other crime scenes. Um, so that's what a latent fingerprint examiner does. Um, and the forensic evidence technician um, is the person that is, has many different names. They call them crime scene techs, crime scene investigators, evidence techs, evidence specialists, lots of different names. But they're the ones that go out to the crime scenes, the ones that you see on the shows that are collecting all of the evidence, taking photographs of everything. But it is not like you see it on CSI. They're not doing all of it. They, these jobs are very compartmentalized into specific areas. So the forensic evidence technicians are also are not also the detectives and the latent print examiners. Um, some agencies may have forensic evidence technicians and latent print examiners as the same person, but that's going to be the extent of it. Um, this is a great career for people who love that technology. Um, you can get a two-year degree or you can um, cut out the general ed requirements like math and English and that, and you can get a certificate in forensics. I personally would recommend the degree because as this career field has become more popular, it has become more competitive and the people that are hiring are now making the requirements to have associate's degrees in forensics or a related field or experience in order to get hired. So I would recommend getting the degree. Uh, it's also a really good, um, good paying job here in San Diego. There's actually, the sheriff's just opened up a position as a forensic evident tech, and I think it's $62,000 a year. Um, so it, it's, it's pretty good. And then once again, that's before overtime, overtime and holiday and on-call pay, all of that. So you can easily make over $100,000 a year as an entry level um, crime scene tech here in San Diego. As I was saying, we meet the accreditation requirements because we have state-of-the-art modern equipment and technology here in our laboratories. Um, so we use DSLR, um, digital single, single lens reflex cameras. Um, so that's not gonna be film. We did used to use film, but not anymore. We've completely transitioned to digital. Um, we have great cameras and lighting equipment, alternate light sources. Those are those fingerprints that you saw that, that glowed. Those, we have several of those different different kinds. We use lasers, use laser photography, which is pretty amazing. Electrostatic dust slipper, lifters. So if you find something that's dusty, but you see a fingerprint or a shoe print in it, there's a machine that you put on it and it makes it to, to um, pick up the dust from, from the, the, the surface. It's pretty great. Um, and chemical fuming hoods and chambers, you saw that. And like I said, all of this is hands-on. So you will sit in a lecture and learn about this from the professionals, but then the next day or the next the other day, you're gonna go into the lab and you're gonna do hands-on stuff. So I'm the one that sets up the crime scenes for you. So sometimes we do outdoor photography where you're, um, there's a crime scene out on the campus and seen when we use um, dummies and fake evidence out there and then you go out there and, and you get to do all of it you get to collect it you get to photograph it you get to think about what happened and why it happened uh, it's it's a pretty pretty great um program that we have new bullet trajectory you're going to use microscopes um, and look at the casings on the bullet casings um, that came out of the gun after it was fired there's individual little marks on there that are unique to each gun. Um, and you get to look under a microscope and see that for yourself. Um, you get to learn from crime scene uh, people who do bloodstain pattern creation and you get to create your own bloodstain patterns. We have this amazing room that's all waterproof with a drain in the middle and you get to go crazy in there and you get to throw blood around and hit things with a hammer to see the blood fly so that you can see what it looks like um, and analyze it. Um, it's a really fun program. It's really, really great. Uh, now I'm just gonna show you some photographs of some of our students and what we've been doing. Like I said, hands-on learning. So these are the outdoor crime scenes that we do. Set it up for you. You have to search the scene. You have to find the evidence. 
Um, and sometimes we put more, more things in there that are evidence and are not evidence. You have to decide what you want to collect. So we don't collect everything. We're not trash collectors. We're not there to pick up every single thing off the ground. You need to discover why you think that this is important to the crime that had happened. This is our new fingerprint lab. Uh, it's pretty great state of the art. We've got beautiful new fume hoods and, and um, fuming chambers. Um, this is currently from this semester where we have the, the new rules with social distancing in smaller classes. Um, so it's, it's been working out pretty well. Uh, we also have a new lecture hall. Um, same thing, we've, we've had for the fingerprint class, the lectures cannot be done online because they are looking at fingerprints while we're lecturing. Um, so we have a physical lecture for that, but same thing, very social distance in that. Um, this is our forensic laboratory. In the back, you can see the white room in the back there. That's our, our blood spatter room that I was telling you about. Um, this is a buds, one of the blood spatter labs. So everyone has their little vial of blood that they're using to document and see what happens when you drop a piece of blood from two inches or 12 inches, what makes it look different, different angles. And we also use the alternate light sources. So these are fingerprints that the students are trying to take photos of using a quadrupod and a camera and an alternate light source to make things glow um, to be visible. We use microscopes, just different things. And one of our professors, she does a practical exam instead of it being a written exam, you have to go through and, and see this crime scene. Um, here's our, our blood spatter lab. We got a student there just hammering some blood so you can see what the blood looks like when it flies across. Our professor, Tony Ann, she's a criminalist. Um, and she's just there explaining what cast off looks like. If you can see the blood is in a line on the wall because it was cast off of a weapon. And here's some chemicals that we use in the lab. Um, this is diazofluorine and indane dion. Um, as you can see, these have been treated, but you can't really see them. Uh, you apply heat and you can see them better. And you use an alternate light source and you can see them even better. This is an anhydrin that we use. Same thing, you can't see it developed very well, but once you apply heat, the fingerprints show up. Um, this is a new technology camera that we have. It's a camera that has infrared technology. So as you can see, there is a shirt that we're taking a picture of, but if you're looking on the viewfinder of the screen of the camera, you don't see the pattern of the shirt you only see the bullet holes. Um, that's because this is an infrared camera which is canceling out the light waves of the pattern on the shirt. Uh, so that's a pretty amazing thing that we can use. Um, you can see the bullet holes there where they were pretty hard to see before because of the pattern. Um, when you use it with the infrared camera, you can see it. And the darkness around the bullet hole is gonna be um, the gunshot residue and you can determine how far away a gun was, if it, how many inches it was away, depending on how much gunpowder there is. Also with the infrared camera, um, this is a 20 euro bill, um, and some of the different colors in the bill disappear when you use an infrared camera. Uh, so you're able to see the fingerprints there. We also use this chemical called Blue Star, and it reacts with blood. It's a bioluminescent, so it glows on its own. So you do not have to use any additional light sources for this. You actually take these photographs in the complete darkness, and this is also one of the labs that we do. Um, so we go into the wet lab again, create a blood stain pattern. You look and you see, and there doesn't seem to be any blood, but when you apply this chemical and turn the lights off, 
everything glows. And so you learn how to photograph that. It's a long, it's timed exposure, a long exposure photograph with our cameras. One of the harder labs we do is tire and shoe impressions in dirt. These ones, um, it requires a lot of work, a lot of equipment. Um, and because it's done in dirt, it's done outside. And you know, here in El Cajon, in San Diego, it gets pretty hot in the summertime. So this is a setup um, that is used. We use a tripod with an inverse mount with a camera and a flash unit at several different angles. There's just, it's a lot of work, but it has to be done to get these different unique characteristics of the crime scene um, to make sure we've got all the evidence right. Another lab we do is serial number restoration. Um, so as you can see on this gun, it looks like the serial number was filed off. However, when you apply a chemical to it, the serial number can come back. Uh, so that's a lab that we do as well in this class. All right, so that is most of the presentation I have for you guys today. Um, I just do wanna make a note that due to the nature of criminal justice and law enforcement, um, you do need to be aware that if you have any prior felonies or misdemeanors, uh, felony domestic violence convictions, psychological holes, temporary restraining orders, um, or other things such as prior substance abuse, including marijuana, um, you can be disqualified from a position in law enforcement. You are completely able to go through our program though. If this is something that interests you and you, you just want to experience it, you can go through our program. We do not do background checks on our students. Um, it's just as a fair warning for a career path. If any of those things that I just mentioned apply to you, it might not be the right field for you professionally, um, but we would absolutely love to have you here in at Grossmont, it's pretty fun. All right, do we have any questions? We don't have any in the uh, Q and A um, questions, um, but I did want to ask a question myself, and that was um, with the uh, certificate program. It said forty-two units. About how long does that take to complete? Um, it takes approximately I would say three to four semesters just because we have sequential um, classes so to, to, I'm sorry three to four semesters um, because we you have to take the beginning courses before you can take the advanced courses um, and if you're taking 12 units a semester 24 units a year. Um, you can do overtime, but we have, um, you have to take the basic courses before you're allowed to take the advanced courses. I'm just looking at that here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a 12 classes. Yeah, it's 12 classes. So that seems like a, almost the same amount of time for the two years uh, degree. Yes, it's very, um, it's, it's a lot of classes additional on top of a degree, because if you're taking 12 classes um, just for the certificate, then you need to take your regular math, English, everything like that. Um, and if you're taking four, maybe even three, so if you're taking three forensics classes a semester um, and you're taking two general ed courses, it's just the amount of time that you're taking um, of your day. Um, and some students, we have, we rotate between doing day courses and night courses. Um, so some students can't do day courses because of work or they can't do night courses because of work. So we rotate every semester if the advanced course is gonna be in the daytime or if the advanced course is gonna be in the evening. Um, so it, it depends on the timing of your schedule and also the schedule that's being put out through the college. Great, that flexibility is awesome. Um, also, what, what is the cost? 
the cost. Um, it's just the regular unit price. I don't know the exact price for, let's look and see if we have it up right now, um, but I can look that up really quick. But it's just that the regular Grossmont College price. We do have um, the Promise program now that if you qualify, we're doing up to two years free college. Um, so that's pretty amazing through financial aid. Um, we have the Dream program for undocumented students to be able to get financial aid as well. Um, it's pretty, pretty great. And we also have scholarships and grants. There's so many scholarships through, through Grossmont College and in the community. Um, it seems like sometimes nobody even applies um, and you get a $500 scholarship here, $400 scholarship there, $1,000 here. And so we really, our professors are really good about trying to find that for you and sending out emails for people um, to, to get those scholarship opportunities. Um, currently, it looks like it's $46 a unit. And that would be for if you didn't have any financial aid or, or, or anything. Um, and one of the savings now is no parking permit because of most things being online. That's yeah. awesome. This was really great. So informative and um, makes me want to have a new career. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty exciting. It's good stuff. It's really good. Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for the presentation. And mm -hmm. um, if you have a chance, if you can put the um, certificate up on your screen. So those Absolutely. who are on our live stream, if they need uh, to take a screenshot of that certificate. Um, that will be up for you. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, you will be getting um, an evaluation for the day. And we please, please uh, make sure to, to fill that out and turn that in. And so there's your congratulations. Uh, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And that way you can let your school know you were here. And we really appreciate you being here with us. Thank you so much. I hope to see you here in one of our classes. Thanks, Caitlin. You're so welcome.